Okay, we've got the wagon here, and I've been given a pair of trash pick bikes. One looks to be a five-speed cruiser, the other one uh, maybe a ten-speed, just a regular trail bike. They're pretty beat up. They've been outside for a while now, but uh, we're going to fix them up. So we'll throw them in the back of the wagon, bring them on home. Okay, we've got the two trash bikes home. Taking a closer look at it, let's take a look at this first one here. It's a Canyon Runner uh, Mountain Tour bike. It uh, doesn't really have a brand name. I think it's a division of CCM. 26 inch girls bike, it's really shot. Uh, it has no shifters for either front or rear. The brakes, except for the front, are locked. Um, it's got new tires on it, which is beautiful, and some nice wheels, uh, but the chain is toast, so it'll need a replacement chain for sure. And uh, has these very neat brakes. I don't think I've ever seen these before. Just a unique pull mechanism. Instead of just a double pull or something like that, it might be something to uh, put on another bike, because it looks Looks like a neat design anyway. So we have this bike here, which I think I'm probably going to end up using for parts. The other bike is a CCM Town & Country, uh, CCM Pro, which is a Canadian manufacturer. Um, I've always liked bikes like this because it's got full fenders on it. Uh, this one's an upgrade from another type of fendered bike I have, as it's a 5-speed and it has two brakes. Um, in a rummage sale a while ago, I purchased a, a 1968 uh, CCM Imperial 700. Uh, it's got pretty rusty wheels, in fact the rear wheel's out of round, uh, but I threw a pair of tubes in it and it was good to go. And it's actually a, not a bad riding bike. It could really use a little bit something more and I think that's exactly what this bike has. So we're going to go ahead and change the tires and the tubes on this bike and flip that steering wheel around. Right now I'm going to soak some WD-40 on it and we'll get back to it tomorrow. First thing I'm going to tackle is actually getting this steering wheel correct because it's just a pain in the butt to move around without it. Right, if this release is okay then I'm going to have to undo the brakes, the shifter, switch it around and then put everything back together again. I thought that was a little high. Okay, because it has a, notice there's a minimum level of insertion right here. It was inserted way down here so it wasn't even in far enough. So when we return it we'll put it back to its highest level uh, that it'll accommodate. Brakes are easy enough. There's just a screw on the, underneath here that clamps it pretty much to the handlebar. Just release it. Okay, so I just undid both bolts. I think I can open it up enough to actually get it off. There. There's a shifter. There's the brake. Do the other side. Then we'll actually move the handlebars around. Okay, now that we have pretty much everything apart, the handlebars are off. We need to loosen this and turn them forward again. Uh, but right now, let's just go ahead and lock it back into place. So you take your, your wheel, Center it as best you can with your feet, like so, and then you take your handlebars here, which are free turning, and then we go ahead and we wiggle this into the tube a little bit. Pulling this wheel in, wiggle back and forth, and it says minimum, it's right there. So now make sure that's aligned, the front wheel, It'd be very annoying if it's not take and re-secure this bolt down tight. Okay, next we're going to loosen this bolt. And it appears we might actually have to flip the handlebars around, so we might have to remove them from this bracket and put them back on. I'm not sure I'm going to do that yet, but you'll see. If you find that these are hard to come off, because very often they're rubber, uh, use a little window cleaner like Windex or something along those lines. It's a lubricant, kind of like soap. You get it in there to help slide them off. Then you rinse it off and you can probably reinstall it. Off she comes. Probably rinse this off and then we'll squeeze it back on again. After this off, put it back on the other way. There. And now our handlebars are just right so we can remount all our accessories. Now that we kind of have all our accessories on, we're going to now is put our handlebars approximately where we think we want them. But throw in your bolt, your lock washer, your nut, and tighten this one up. And then we'll uh, just reattach your brakes where you like them, and we'll move on next to changing the front tire too. Uh, removing the tire on the front anyway is a three-step process. You need to release the brake. That will give you clearance. Um, that will open it up, allow you to move the tire, and you have to undo each bolt on each side. Set it up like so, it should be flat and level in the wheel opening moldings, and then you tighten them down. 
now that we have the wheel on and relatively centered then what we're going to do is you make sure your adjuster down here is midway so you have adjustment either tight or loose without having to loosen or tighten anything you want to clamp your brakes down you might need a pair of pliers to pull on this wheel string nice and tight and you want to tighten it down with a wrench there should be enough play in the braking system that when you let go it should back off enough that it won't be riding against the wheel if not then you can use your adjuster and back it off some actually making it tighter I want to make it looser Perfect. Now that we have the front tire done, let's do the back tire. And there's a lot of grass and stuff worked in here, but uh, I think when we take off the rear wheel, a lot of that will come out. It's pretty simple. Undo this bolt over here, undo this bolt right over here, and then what we have to do is just remember this rear wheel has a sprocket on it, um, so we'll have to undo the chain mechanism uh, when we pull the wheel off, and I'll show you how to do that. Now that I have the bolts undone, what you do is you lift this mechanism back as best you can, lift the wheel out, and don't forget to undo the brake, and then you get it to uncog, then you can pull the wheel out. Don't mess around with this too much, we'll want it to put it all back together later. Now that we have our new tire on, you'll want to work your sprocket in with the gears here, and then you make sure everything's out of the way, and then you'll rocket it back into the holes and you'll make sure that everything is nice and square as best you can and with this one there is some play so you'll want to make sure that you work it back and forth because this gear mechanism actually uses this to settle so you'll bottom this one out and then you'll adjust this one to make sure your wheel is straight some tires are directional not such a big deal on the front you can just flip the wheel around but on this one since the sprocket has to be on this side um, you definitely have to make sure you install it correctly and then once you get it all lined up redo your brake and we'll move on to the chain Okay, so our front wheel's on, new tire, new tube. We realign the brakes, tighten them up a little bit. They work great. Um, we put the rear tire on, new tube, align the brakes, they work great. The shifter mechanism works great in order to shift from gear, and there's a five speed, I believe. Nope, it's a six speed. But there's one thing left with this bike, and this is very common to several bikes that have been out in the rain, and the chain is all rusty. And most of the links are free. We see where they'll bend. But some not so much. So there are two things you can do. The easiest way is just to replace the chain. You'll have to you know, work it through some of these sprockets and what have you. You have to remove those to put the new chain on. Or if you're cheap like me, you can try to fix it. So by hitting it with lots of penetrating oil, like a PV Blaster or WD-40, you try to get these links to move. You use a pair of uh, pliers, um, either adjustable or non, and you work these links back and forth. Let me throw you in the tri uh, tripod and show you what I mean. What you can do to help free up links like this one is obviously uh, seized uh, is you can take your pliers and kind of hold one straight and then use these and try to break them free so that they do move. You can go through each one and work it back and forth. As long as they're not hard, hard, hard and they'll break free pretty quick. They usually only have a bit of surface rust keeping them from turning. Go through the entire chain and free up all the links. And this way it'll roll through the gear mechanism much easier and then of course the more you ride it keep it well oiled it'll get better and better over time now if you're a hardcore bike rider don't do this get a new chain but this is just a casual bike might go on a trip that might be 5 10 15 miles um, I'd feel okay taking a chain like this as long as it's not too worn uh, out with me and as long as it's because uh, it's in good shape it's just rusted um, so break them free that one's a real bad one but they'll, they'll open right up go through the entire chain Lube them up like that, and now you've got yourself a bicycle. We have just restored this very big, very awesome 26 inch road bike. Or actually, it's a, a cruiser type bike. Thanks for watching.